welcome back guys so they keep you up to date on what's happening with the dirty bird i got the waste gates moved all the co2 uh stuff for control and boost is all wired in plumbed in uh, i tested it last night which i'll show you a little bit later on in this video and then hopefully if the weather holds out we can go out there and try to command some extra boost but uh now that i got the car up in there i'll go ahead and show you what's going on um so this was where the original uh, wastegate was. As you can see, it was in a very poor location. And then versus where it is now, same thing on this side, there, and where it was previously. So we got four, four and a half, five pound springs in the wastegates now. I'll go out there and take a take a hit on it. It should not make over six pounds. I'm hoping somewhere in that range. But I was going to show you guys, I just put a Motion Raceworks LS engine diaper on here. Again, you know, it goes back to safety the same as like having a coolant catch can. If you blow a head gasket or pressurize the coolant system, you know, you don't want any of this stuff underneath your tire at 120, 30, 40 mile an hour. But uh, so that was a nice fit. My drains aren't exactly in the best place. They should be going into the cover and uh, so it doesn't really do a whole lot in this area like it would if I didn't have my drains there. But for the most part, it's gonna protect anything, you know, if I spit a rod out of the oil pan for sure. And it straps up pretty good and tight across the back here. So I don't think we'll have any issues and it's all about as tight as it can get all the way around. <laughs> yeah. So, what I have next to do is I'm going to install these billet lug nuts right here. They're from Billet Specialties, the same people who make the wheels. I'm going to take those, uh, you know, heavy ones there off, put these ones on. I should pick up, I don't know, four or five seconds in the eighth mile just off of this right here. You know, just gain city on a set of lug nuts. But, uh, so I'll be right back and hopefully we can uh, go take a ride. All right guys, I'll run through real quick on how the Mega Squirt controls boost via two MAC valves. So this is a CO2 source coming in. This is your fill valve. And this line goes out, goes over to the two waste gates. And it's got a transducer here that reads the pressure. And this is the empty. So if I command, you know, 200 kPa is 14 pounds of boost. This is going to open this valve and fill this line until this transducer sends a signal to the computer and says, all right, we got 14 pounds or 200 kPa. And if it overshoots to 210, 220, this valve will open and vent the pressure off. So it, it like basically between these two, it'll hold the pressure dead in the center. <clears throat> and I'll uh, test it for you in like a bench test real quick. We got the lug nuts on torque to 100 pounds so go up here to boost dome I believe my co2 is on I'll put this at 200 and then I'll test it real quick Let's see. if you watch dome kPa here Let's see here So that's basically it. So we'll go ahead and zero that back out. Then it. All right. Close that. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go out and see what my wastegate springs make boost wise. And then this table here is based on throttle percentage versus rpm and this is where i'll put the desired amount of boost uh let's say you know if it makes eight pounds now and i want it to make 14 pounds i would take you know these cells based on throttle percentage by rpm and put it at you know 200 for instance and i'll just have to play with this and watch data logs to see what kpa here makes what actual manifold pressure so I guess I'll go on out there and, and test it and see what it does. All right, 
I'm gonna hit it as soon as I round this corner up here on just weight, waste gauge spring pressure. Remember, it's got four pound springs in it. So we know it made seven, seven and a half pounds. So I'm gonna add 150 kPa to the dome, which is about eight pounds. So in theory, it should make about 14, 15 pounds of boost in the manifold. So let's see what it does. All right, this will be with uh, 150 kPa on the dome. So should give me about 15 pounds, give or take. get up here and round this corner. see that my max boost was 13.3 up here um, and then down here you can see what my dome target was was 150 and at this point in time the actual KPA was 155 um, you can just watch it kind of scale around and this is the actual dome and this is what my target is so at the very least, it's within one pound of boost. Right there, it overshot it. That's about two pounds of boost. But then it brought it back down. So if you come up here and look at the boost, you see that one little bit of a spike, but I think it's really unmeasurable. But that's it, that shows that it's working. I guess I just have to go in and mess with the dead band and try to clean it up, make it a little bit more accurate. All right, that'll do it for this video. Um, how I got the boost controller working and all. John actually got the, the nitrous on his. Shoo. Got that juice working, John? Shoo. How much you spray it with the other night? Not the house. You sprayed the whole house on it? No. Okay. So let me get down here so we both go into orlando speed world sunday for a test and tune so we're gonna well, i think we're all done nitrous is working over there boost controller is working over here just gotta wash them so, up wash them up get them clean get them looking good and uh 
We're gonna make some videos when we're down there. Hopefully some in-car videos, and hopefully we'll run some good times. And uh, maybe we can share a little bit of information with you, you know, being big time grudge racers and all. But uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like, share, subscribe, do your thing. You know, try to try to get legacy performance out there for us. Yep. Thanks for watching. Till next time.